Hello, YouTube. Happy Saturday. And we are back to continue working on our project. I'm Robin McClendon. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel. Oh my goodness. I'm excited to get to working on this um, cradle board and really working these prints that we did last week down into a finished piece of art. And you know, like I really appreciated a lot of the feedback. You guys really, really liked this technique. And it was funny because we were in the chat for those of you who weren't in the premiere and a couple of ladies like, oh my God, well, like one with well, Teresa, I know her pretty, I know her really well. And she was laughing and she says, oh my God, I thought that was about ready to be a mess. <laughs> and then when you pulled it, it was like fabulous. I'm telling you, it is so easy. The gel plate is so forgiving. And if you just, you know, just a few basic principles and I'm telling you, you can really get it to sing for you and just really do some really fabulous things with it. So many said, oh, I would just frame it just like that. And, you know, you could have this as a finished piece of art. Maybe you would just collage some things on top of it. Maybe use it as a background <clears throat> to do a floral relief or some other kind of thing on top of it. But it could stand on its own because it's so complex. It's a lot going on in here. But we are going to work this down into a dimensional piece on the cradle board because I like working on cradle boards off. I also like coming back with cold wax or encaustic wax. Those of you who have taken some of my workshops or in Patreon, you know, we will finish these off with, with, um, with, um, a cold wax a, 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 or a, um, encaustic wax, that kind of thing. So, um, it's just my preference, but of course you don't have to do that. You can just leave it beautifully on the cradle board, maybe finish it with a matte acrylic to seal it. So we're going to work on this. We're going to figure out what part of that piece we're going to work on. And one of the things that I did, um, me and the patrons we did, is I wanted to work with some, some scripted paper. Wasn't sure how that was going to work out. Um, I also wanted to work with some high contrast, you know, sort of black and whites and using some of my inks and what have you to stain uh, these old dictionary pa um, pages, but I also put it on, I glued it to the same substrate that I used for the paper. Because when I go to use the cradle board, because I'm, I'm gonna be using and tearing these papers in sections, I want everything to have the same height. I don't wanna just put down like a thinner piece of paper or something like that. I don't really care for the way that looks, not to say that you can't do it. So I made a lot of pieces here using, um, some vintage papers and um, kind of stained stuff and uh, got these fabulous papers. I'll leave the link, but um, I love um, Rachel over at um, Roxy's Creations. And, you know, she's in Italy and she gets the best. She has such a good eye for old vintage papers. And I, I never can seem to get Italian papers. Um, and I mean, I go to, you know, France a lot. I'm always getting stuff from the flea markets. And the times I've gone to Italy, I never can find like the good papers. But, you know, she has all the spots down. So if you're looking for some really yummy, old, I mean, I think these papers were like, 17th or 16th century, some of them, but they're just beautiful, old, um, handmade papers, just the texture and everything are gorgeous. And I just think that they elevate your artwork. So really being able, and she sells them for a fair price. So they're not crazy expensive or anything. Um, so I'll leave the link for her, but definitely if you're into this, you know, go show her some love and let her know that I sent you because I do, I really do adore her, her, her style. And I find it, she's like a lot of, um, kind of ASR for me. I like to see her chatter and do her work and everything. And she keeps it real too. And I like that about her. So, so those of you probably know who I'm talking about, if not, I'll have the link in also to her Etsy shop. So I wanted to shout out Rachel because I love her papers and you know, it does well for us to share each other out here as artists and as creators, cause you know, we all are loving what we do and sharing it with the world. And I feel when we all share with each other, the better it is for everybody, right? Okay. So here's a cradle board. I like to use the Blick. 
I use the unprimed for this because I am gluing right on it. The primed is good if you're going to paint on it, or if I'm going to do encaustics and oils right on it, then I will do the um, prime, but a lot of times I still do the unprime because I like the wood grain. Just depends. But this one is the unprimed wood panel for Dick Blick. And I'm going to tell you, these are not expensive. I think this one might have been 14 or 12 or 14 dollars, and it's a 12 by 12. So it's a nice size. So there's that for everyone. And just to show you, we have, I have another one I'm working on in the patrons, but this is one that I already started from a print that we did in the patron session. But look at that. Isn't that just good? And then going back with some of the, some of the papers that we did on the rice paper, I've already sort of selected these to use. Like, I just think that's good with this gold. So it's just kind of figuring out how I'm going to work stuff in there. I'll be tearing the papers and doing a whole thing with them, sort of similar to what we did with the large sheet a couple weeks ago, but I'm working on that. So I got a lot of crayon boards going here in the studio, um, but I wanted to get this going with, with you all. So, so this is a 12 by 12. This, I'm gonna use this one print as a base, but I'm gonna be tearing it up. So it's not gonna be a base. I'm not gonna put it on the whole board because I feel like I would be wasting it because I could do so much more with it. But this section here really speaks to me. And I feel with some of what I have going on with the, with the high contrast, and these are all going to get torn down, but you see how that works well. I feel like this is working well. It sort of has this old world look. And then I have some pieces here that I also had from the earlier piece. And it's, um, I stain them with ink to kind of to bring the color in. So some of these can work. So we're going to play with them and just sort of figure out what we're doing. I even have some of this, which I just love and oh, all the ink stain edges and stuff. But this may be for another one. I don't know. But let's just go ahead and figure out what part of this I'm going To start off with, so what I think I'm going to do, let me see this, let's see this side also. Let's, we got to do a little bit of auditioning. I really like a lot of this pink. Maybe this side. Because I like the pink and the, the celadon tones. I'm trying to keep it somewhat neutral, but somewhat... Okay, so let's go ahead and take this bit right here. So I'm going to take it over to, I know I'm not going to use all of it, ends there. So let's go ahead and rip some of this, where's my ruler? Right here. Because I, I feel like I want to preserve this part of it, because I feel like this goes well with this side, and that may be a whole piece I'd put down <clears throat> that I could do my encaustic oils and wax medium over it and really do something with that. So let's just take, this is 12 inches and this is about, let's go about this far in. Okay. Okay. Well, see, that leaves a nice section for another board that then I could go, maybe even from this side, that then I would go and keep on working on top of. So that's another day. Right now, I'm loving these tones. So let's start off figuring out kind of where we want to put things. So what I do is I start laying things down and we're going to overlap. Um, I'm going to be tearing these. So these are not going to stay whole. Like I just have to kind of start figuring out, okay, where do I want to put things and how do I want to finish it off? I love the edges. 
Um, I think I like the neutral part of that. This is always the tricky part, working it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and take, I, I always leave a little over because um, once I glue everything down and everything dries, then I use my X-Acto to clean it all up. It just keeps you from getting it too short too. So we'll take that off. Okay, let's put this down. I sort of figure that, then this is going to get torn. So I like how it's already sort of a natural grid. I'm not going to put it this is where things get a little fiddly because you have to figure out exactly where you want you know your your placement. going to cut this this white edge off because I'm not going to need it and I feel like I'm going to end up preserving this. So I'm always thinking in terms of a grid. It's already, I, I'm liking that. So let's see. Let's change up This part always looks easier than what it is, doesn't it? I feel like I like this whole piece, but I really also feel like maybe I should cut it. Or maybe hit my grid this way. I find that if you can get your elements together and sort of create a grid, but I still think this is just too big. I think it would be better if it kind of lined up so that it sort of did this, you see it looks a little more harmonious because everything is going this way. And then we have that this way and we get to still, still see a lot of the print without covering too much of it up. Let's look. Okay. And I still have a bit of this and I like how it um, gives a different dimension there, but it still seems like it works. It does, it's not too drastic. And if I put, so maybe if I switched it, put this there and put a bit up in that corner Think that's too matchy matchy. We don't want that. Let's put that there. And let's see if a bit of this could work. That that little bit there could be good, but then I almost feel like I shouldn't. Maybe a bit of something that's just plain. You know, maybe just the plane to do it like this. So we won't have any, we won't have any um, writing, but it just kind of gives another, I don't like that like this. I think I like it like this. Maybe I need to stop there. But you know how you feel like something will work? <clears throat> Maybe once I get it all, oh, you know what? Wait a minute, I have this right here. This could work. <gasps> yeah, because it gives another bit of the element without it. Okay, I think that could do it. 
could also do the whole thing like that in a bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the first thing glued down. Now that I've pretty much got it figured out, let's go ahead and get this down. <clears throat> got to start somewhere. So I'm going to use my glitter glue and uh, let's Is this open yet? Maybe. Okay. Let's go ahead and get some down. So uh, any kind of PVA. So this, this glitter glue is really good. It's good um, amount of um, adhesive to it. You know, I find it, it doesn't yellow. Um, and I find that it really holds over time. But I also like to use, I'm just a bit out of it now. I need to order, I need to keep this out so I can remember to order it. But I also like the PVA from um, Lineco. Um, so there's a few good PVAs out there that you can get right on um, Amazon. I like to spread the glue. This is a, uh, on the silicone sil silicone catalyst but you can also use a credit card works nicely or you know a hotel key card does a good job <clears throat> just the main thing is to get a nice generous coat but even you don't want it to squish out you don't want any dry spots but you don't want it to squish out either you know, you don't want it to be too much, in other words. Let's get a little bit more down. It's a little dry here. I think my board is drying out really quickly, but I'm in Arizona, so everything dries out quickly. It's amazing how quickly it's drying out. See how much I'm putting on there? Because uh, you probably wouldn't have to put as much. Okay, that's good. You just definitely want a good coat. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get this on here. I'm going to go, I'm going to be a little over the sides all the way around. I like to do that because once everything is dry, then I can come back and just get a really nice clean edge. You, you want to wait, you know, a good while. Like I just let it sit overnight. I'll put weight on this and then um, I'll come back and really um, you know, once everything is dry, then from the back side, using a, a nice, sharp exacto, I'll, um, you know, cut those pieces off. Now, a little bit of the glue ran down. I like to go ahead and wipe the glue right now because I'm going to paint my sides. I like to paint them. Generally, I paint them black because I like the contrast, but, you know, you could do whatever. You could actually put paper around the sides, too. So I like to get this glue off so I know that it won't interfere when it's time for me to paint. I won't have that layer of, uh, you know, glue there. So you want to get a good, you know, make sure this paper is really, it's a, it's a thick paper, so it's going to go down pretty nicely. It's not going to lift. Okay, now we're thinking about this one is going to go here. Love this paper. This is a, some paper she had gotten that has, I don't know if you can see the wormholes in it. It has a lot of wormholes all through it. I love it. Oh, it's the best. In fact, when she was using some, I was looking at her channel and she was using some of this Rachel, you know, Roxy Creations. And, um, oh my goodness. When she said she found all these books with the wormholes in them, of course she loved it. I'm like, oh my God, I hope she's selling it. And then she said, oh, I'm going to have this up for sale. I'm like, oh, thank God. 
I think I ordered immediately a few packs of it. Okay, so that goes there. I had this one figured like right here. And then this one is going to be here. I think I want it this side because there's a lot going on. Okay, that's good. Okay, so far so good. And then this is going to end up being right on the edge here. Or, uh, and we're also going to do this. Really like this right here. I think that does a nice thing. It, it's a nice juxt juxtaposition, but, and maybe, just maybe, I'll take it all the way across. What about that? Maybe I like it all the way across, guys. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I think I like that. Oh, that's good. Okay, so let's keep going. So I feel like I'm going to put this down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This will go here. I'm going to get a good chunk of this. I really feel like that's good. Yeah, that's to my liking with the ink blots. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do next is put this one down because this one here may overlap a bit, which is good. I like that. And this is going to go here. So let's go ahead and get this down. This is next. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get I really like this piece. Uh, I coffee stained it. And then I have a lot of inks. I have uh, also one of my patrons. She's been making bespoke inks. And uh, she only does a limited edition of them. <clears throat> and I've I've sold a few of them at one of my workshops. Well, a lot of them went at the workshops, but then she's making a whole bunch more. And I'll sell them on my uh, on my first Friday sales once I get back to them. It's just been so busy with the um, summit and everything. Goodness, I have not been able to catch my breath, like they say. Let me see, where's the edge here? This was there. Okay, let's try to make sure that I'm getting this somewhat even. Okay, like that. But yeah, so if you want to keep up, you know, um, I know everybody can't hang out at Patreon. I get that. But if you want to keep up with what I'm doing and other like really neat little cool things like that, then make sure you jump on my my email list. My I mean my um not the email, but my list for my I do a monthly magazine. It's kind of like a newsletter, but it's really inspirational because I kind of show the work that I have my own artwork for the month and maybe exhibits I've gone to and other things that I've done or from traveling you know, places that I, you know, it's, it's just really kind of, it's a zine. It's just a neat way to share with you my world. And, uh, it is really highly visual, but I only, I don't mail it out to my entire mailing list. Cause I try not to, you know, I try to only send people what they want. So, um, uh, so with that said, there's a, there'll be a link below for the zine. It'll say newsletter or zine. Make sure you get on that list because that's where all of anything that I'm doing, um, you know, outside of telling my patrons, that's where I share with the community first. Just, you know, just, you know, reward for, you know, hanging out with me and, you know, being supporting what I do and all of that. So you can just do that by, it's no cost involved. You just click the link and join the zine and stay updated that way. But then 
things like this. Where is that? This is what I want. Things like, um, I feel like I want to get rid of that white. Wait, is it going to actually show? Let's just look. No, it's not going to show because it's going to be covered by this. Okay, cool. Wow, look at that. This is good. See, it does take a while to figure things out. In fact, let me, the camera's getting ready to die, so let me restart it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some glue on this. But I was saying all that to say that I'll be selling Cindy's inks, and um, when I do go to release them, that's where I'll, I'll, that'll be the first notification. So if you're at all interested in any of these bespoke, they're all natural, they're all, you know, plant or um, derived from either plants or flora, you know, fauna, or um, also natural pigments, ground, you know, stuff. So yeah. Okay, so let's put this down here. Oh, love it. Yeah, I like it. I don't want it so even. I feel that blends in nicely without being, it's in a grid, but I, I have it just over just a little bit. And that's on purpose, so it's not just so, you know. I, I like things a little. <clears throat> off, not so exact. A little maybe asymmetrical, but this one I'll line up. Oh, that's good. Okay, so that'll go down. So let's go ahead and get the glue. Okay. Let me put some more in the bottle real quick. I love this little stopper bit. Yeah, it really does a good job at getting the glue dispersed nicely. When you get the, I'll, I'll make sure you have oh, the link for, ooh, talking and too much, the link for this glitter glue if you don't have it already. Because the cool thing about it is that it, um, got off, is that it comes <clears throat> I always find that they come a lot of different ways, but I always find the one that gives me um, <clears throat> this size bottle, which is a eight ounce and then a two ounce and they come together and they're actually cheaper than some of the other ways that other, I guess a number of co companies offer this product, you know, sell it on Amazon, but I always like the one that sells it these two together. And I think it's like only 20 something dollars, but I like the large one, you know, and the small one together. Cause I really use this, this stopper bit. Okay. So you see, I'm making sure that with this one is so much space that I want to spread the, uh, I want to spread the, that glue out so it's not just too much. So there we go. That's good. Oh, this is good. Just having some of these old papers, you know, having the contrast, you know, having high contrast. And what I like about this is that this is, is a high contrast here, but so is this, but it's a different color palette. And I think those two different color palettes give interest without it being um, the same matchy-matchy, which is what I was trying not to have by having the two pieces, like one up here and one up there. You know, it's always kind of search for your stuff and find out what'll work. But at the same time, I like this. It's harmonious and it's kind of giving you a similar thing, but it's not too matchy. Okay. Okay, so now let's just put this last piece down. <clears throat> and then I'll let it dry. And then I'll come back and end the video with uh, 
you seeing me clean it up because I think that's important. You can see how I do it. And there we've taken, you know, a large print and worked it down. And in a lot of ways, you know, we've covered up mostly this bottom half is what got covered up. But you know, you have to just kind of go with what seems right in the moment, which is why I didn't want to put the whole thing down because I still have all of this because I knew I was going to cover up some of it. But until you start working, you don't really know <laughs> what's going to get covered and what's going to stay. <clears throat> So these are all kind of hanging over the sides, but that's good because I'm going to let it settle. And then we'll come back and cut this up. I love it. I mean, gosh, this is just good stuff. You know, it's interesting. All right, we'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. It's been a few hours and things are dried pretty good. So what you want to do is you want to take a nice, sharp exacto. I change my blade. So I have a nice fresh blade. Now this is the one that, um, you know, after you use it a few times, you know, how you just kind of break it. Uh, you see where the, the line is there. They go all the way down. You can break it and keep the blade fresh. I happen to like this it costs a little bit more, but it's worth it in the end. Cause you can keep a fresh blade. Um, and it's nice and sturdy. The cheaper ones, you get those cheap ones. They kind of move around in the housing here, and then it can make you cut into your painting, worse yet, cut into your finger. And, but this is a nice strong one because it has that metal um, shank in there inside of the plastic where some of them just like have the plastic and it's moving all around in there. So make sure you get a good one. And I have my cutting mat down. So what I basically do is I angle my blade in slightly so that, um, just kind of slightly angle it in right up against the wood. And then don't try to cut through the whole thing at one time. Just, you know, go through a few layers at a time. And that way you get this really nice, clean cut. A lot of times when people use the X-Acto, they just bear down too hard the first time. Like they try to get through everything. And that's not the way to handle it. You just want to... Um, Take your time and really a light touch is the best. And you get this really nice, sharp, clean line, right? Okay, let's get this side here. So once again, even these little pieces, I just kind of go very, just like two times and you're through it. It's just, you definitely want to just take your time with it. And that way you don't gouge into your painting. It doesn't come into this, this part of it and, and mess things up. And let's get this last side here. So just a nice light hand. And you just kind of go over as many times as you need until it, 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 you know, will release easily. And, uh, wow, there we have it. So I love it, of course. <laughs> it's a labor of love. You see how, you know, it, it takes a while for you to kind of move the pieces around and kind of figure out, you know, what you want to do with it. But having that, I feel like having that gel print on a nice quality paper, you know, that helps you get a chunk of it. And then you can have all your other papers, all your other collage fodder laying around so that you can kind of like move things around. And because I already had this though, it really, originally I didn't think about using it. I just, you know, I had made a lot of papers with the coffee and the tea stain. And I thought, well, you know, I'll use it for something. Um, but I didn't have it in mind to use it for this one. But it turns out as I'm working, it's perfect. It's a perfect just juxtaposition of high contrast, but then it blends in and it just makes so much sense of this paper, but you know, like that old, See if I can get you to see a good look at just the quality of the paper. The there we go. The age really shows through on this paper. It's just a beautiful piece of 
old document. And I feel like that old document really adds to like the history of the piece. And then this, even though it's new, it blends in beautif beautifully. And this is an old dictionary page, maybe from the 70s or the 60s. So it's not terribly old, but just the type of print and the type of paper. The paper is definitely different than more modern books. And so just like having those sort of, you know, things going on in the course, because I love brush work, this always makes sense in my work. And uh, there we have it. So what I'll end up doing is painting the sides. I, I will paint them black. I normally like painting my sides on my pieces black, but you can do what, whatever you like. A lot of times, um, sometimes I'll paint them beforehand or at, it doesn't matter because it, it's pretty easy to control it along this side. And it also helps just to kind of get rid of that white line from cutting it. But anyhow, there we have it. So one um, cradle board, you know, designed and ready to go using um, our papers from last week. And, you know, I probably am going to go on and use a cold wax on this this time around. I think I promised my patrons we'd do cold wax on our pieces, which is a nice way of sealing them in and just getting that extra kind of dimension into your work. Um, but yeah, so there we have it. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's I've enjoyed this process. It was kind of a little bit on the spot because I'm like, you know, like I'm in real time figuring it out. But I like to show you all that so you can see, you know, like in real time how I'm creating, not something that's kind of pre-scripted, you know, already and what have you. Um, but I look forward to next week. Let's see what we'll do. I'm sure we'll do something on the gel plate. Maybe we'll continue with the large and kind of continue with some ideas. We'll see. But anyhow. Love you guys. It's always nice. I'm hanging out and have a great week and have so much fun in your studio and happy creating. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.